There's my intro. All right. We are back again. It's Robert Pepo, episode 21 of Small Business Uncensored. I am with Buzz and Barbecue right now. This is Buzz. We uh, came together a while back. We'll get into that. But Buzz, welcome. If you want to give a little short intro, uh, that'd be cool. Um, definitely want to hear everything from you, what you got going on, and then uh, we'll get into it. So go ahead, do the proper intro for yourself. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm uh, Antonio Cisneros, and we're called Antonio or Buzz. I'm the owner of Buzz and Barbecue, and uh, we are here now. Uh, we've been doing a lot of little small little caterings and pop-ups, but we got our location. That's what we're here to talk about. But uh, I hope to talk to you guys. Well, we're going to talk to you guys, and we'll go from there. Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> so he was about to get right into it. Uh, I'm going to back us up just a minute. So how we met um, at one of his catering uh, uh, street events at Pierogi Fest, one of the biggest uh, fests of the year for foodies, um, vendors, and people who just love all kinds of different kinds of foods uh, out in Whiting. Yes. Uh, it's actually where your location is going to be. And that's how we met. Um, and I wanted to talk about how we met for the people out there. Um, to see how you can get to know people, collaborate with people, and how it all happened. So I was at Pierogi Fest, and I was like, all right, cool, you know, we eat some pierogies or whatever, but I love good food, right? So I'm always looking at what the new vendors are, and we've been there several years, and then I saw a barbecue place. I'm like, oh, this is dope. Uh, and it had the smoking, you know, your sign out there and everything, so I'm like, oh, I'm for sure going to try it. And, uh, and he wasn't actually there right then. Obviously, you can't be there 24 seven. He was probably on a smoker in the back and I didn't know, <clears throat> you know, I just wanted to try it. I didn't think anything would even come of it. Get some good food and be done. Uh, but then he had a little Instagram thing. So of course I'm heavy on social media. So uh, for you other business people, have your social media tags out there, right? Cause then you can connect with people. That's true. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I hit it on Instagram. I'm like, oh, dope, cool, clicked it. Um, had the food and I tagged it or whatever, no problem. Just like I would normally do for shit I like. And if I didn't like it, I wasn't gonna post it. So obviously that tells you something, so it's pretty good. And then, uh, you know, Buzz, you know, click like or whatever, something simple, and uh, follow each other's pages. And then you realize uh, you have a lot of things in common. Uh, and when you're younger, own businesses, you can connect, which we did, Yes. right? So for everybody out there, um, supporting people and getting on their pages and doing that and checking them out is pretty important. So have your stuff like this, your QR codes, your Instagram handles, Twitter, whatever you use a lot of, have it out there and for people to see it because boom, just like this, you can uh, make some good connections. So um, and that's the power of social media too. So why do we gotta be heavy you know, on social media when you start uh, your new business because you're pretty heavy for the catering stuff you do and the brew tour stuff uh, that you got going on because you've done a lot of things. For everyone else watching, if they're like, oh, you know, I don't know how to use it. Oh, well, you better learn. You better learn on that. I mean, social media is a big help. It, it helps you big time. You need it. Like, you really need it. You need to post and post and post. That's how people see you. That's how people follow you. It, and they will to your events. And if you don't use it, not that many people are going to follow you. Not people are going to know about you. That's technology nowadays. We need that. We need to move forward. I mean, there's people that can still do it without it because they already had the following, but for new people like us and the people that are gonna follow, a lot of them are young and they're all on social media. So social, social media is gonna help out big time for us. Exactly. Like for Pepos, we have an older demographic that started with us in the 70s, right? But what I'm trying to do for the new, new age, uh, new generation and the younger people coming up, that next uh, customer coming in is exactly what you just said. Um, and having that all tied together, so no matter where they are, um, it funnels to each other. So um, eager to see how you get your website up and do all that. You know, we'll click all the links uh, for everything in the descriptions here. So any way to get to him will be listed in here. Um, but for now, if you want to just tell them right now, your Instagram, uh, which you're pretty heavy on in your Facebook as well, um, go ahead and plug that now as well. So for Instagram, it's uh, Buzz and Barbecue, B-U-Z-Z-I-N-B-B-Q. And for Facebook, it's Buzz and Barbecue, the same way, LLC. And the website, if we're working on it right now, it's not fully up yet, but it will be buzzandbarbecue.com. All right, sounds good. <clears throat> now, one thing I wanted to say too is uh, the camaraderie uh, between the barbecue guys. Before we get into the depths of everything that Buzz is doing in his story, um, 
how we met, and obviously we're collaborating now, uh, so we've created a cool friendship. Uh, but there's a lot of other people in the barbecue community that are uh, kind of um, form a more of a camaraderie than I've noticed, <clears throat> and I think it's pretty cool. And your friends uh, as well, uh, like the photography and all that. Um, I've really seen it with Phil and Pork Mafia, um, yeah. how they brought things together. So I just think that's a cool thing, and I'd like to do more of that. Um, and I saw it first in the barbecue community, specifically with you and your friends, and then Phil, uh, who we've worked with for a while, that uh, more of a collaboration instead of competition. Oh, yeah. Thank because you. everybody's, you know, we're all spread out too. You know, some people that we met were in different states, right? right? But we're all collaborating for a common goal to make each other better and to, to learn new things and try new things. And so I think that was pretty dope. Um, and it's inspired me to do more, like in our industry, yeah. um, which is what we're doing, obviously. Um, so I just wanted to put that in there uh, for collaboration over competition. Yeah, um, I, 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 well, with the Phil thing, like Phil was doing, Phil was doing great with that pork mafia, and they're gonna have another one. I think tomorrow mm -hmm. there's gonna be another one. But I, I've noticed that the smaller mom and pops barbecues and backyard guys, we we try to tend to be as one. We're not in competition with each other. We're trying to make it better and trying to make it so everybody can go to. Um, just like in Austin, like Austin has so many places. So like they have Rolling Smoke, they have uh, Valentina's, they have Interstellar, they have they have so many and no one's fighting with each other. Like, no, you can't steal mine or no, you can't do this. Or, you can't, I'm not gonna work with him because we're gonna take his business. Dude, I, I've noticed that, that everybody is as one and we're gonna work as one and we're gonna build ourselves and we're gonna get better. We're gonna overtake like I don't know, it's weird to say, but the corporation, we're, yeah, we're, totally. we're going to take them down because we're mom and pop and everyone's going to like, well, technically, I mean, everyone would want to go to us because, I mean, who wants something in a bag that's frozen and then warmed up? Like, I don't want that. I yeah. want something that's fresh. I want something that's cooked overnight. Uh, I'll pay that extra fix. I'm willing to pay that extra money to get quality or quantity. Same. So and that's yeah. what I try to convey in our business as well. Right. So we make sandwiches. Cool. There's a lot of other people that do that, Subway and Jim Johns, but we don't want to compete with them. Yeah. We're not competing with them. They, they're they not on my radar, really, which sounds kind of silly. They're the leaders in our industry, fine, but they can have what they do. I yeah. don't want that. <clears throat> We've always wanted to be better and different, starting from when my dad started in the 70s, right? How can we get the freshest stuff possible um, at the highest quality, right? So we never really go for the price point on things. If, if somebody comes to me with the price point thing, and a cheap meat or something, I was like, I'm not going to take that. Yeah. What are your better quality meats and cheeses that I then I'll choose from those? Yeah. Um, that's how we approach it because it turns out in the product exactly yeah. like you said. Um, and that's why I'm confident with what we're going to do yeah. because we are different, and, and my approach to it is different as well, uh, just like you were saying. So totally. Um, now you mentioned Texas, so do you want to start uh, kind of telling me about your background, uh, even your, your younger years into your come up, how you even got into barbecue? Because I'd like to hear it. I, I heard a little bit, of course, um, but this long form podcast is going to give me a lot more detail too. Yeah, so um, on my mother's side, um, my grandparents, my grandma from my mom's side is from West Laco, Texas, which is over by the valley, um, Brownsville, Matamoros, all that, South Padre Island, all that, that's where technically she's from. And then my grandfather is from Mexico, um, next to Nuevo Laredo, which is a city outside of it, it's called Colombia. And right now there's another bridge over there. That's where all, all the semi trucks and all the trains go through there so they won't block the main entrances for people to come in and out. Um, my grandfather met my grandma and then um, Inland Steel, East Chicago, Indiana, came looking for people to work in the Chicago the mills. My grandfather was like, hey, let me go check it out and see what it's about. He came out here, he landed in a, a city right outside of East Chicago. It's like in between East Chicago and Hammond, it's called, or Wedding. It's called um, something town, Marchtown. It's called Marchtown. And he landed there by himself. Um, my two older aunts were born over there in Mexico and my grandma was still over there by herself. He came out here, worked in the mills. I think after about a year, he sent for them and my, my aunts and my grandma came out and then my mom was born in Gary because they moved from Marchtown into Gary and my mom was born in Gary and then my, the younger aunt was born in Gary. From there, um, my, I, never met, I never got to meet my grandfather, he passed. But I'm thinking we got his business um, ideas from him because when he got here, 
you worked in the mills, from the mills, you open up a grocery store, two grocery stores, two gas stations, and he owned probably like four apartment buildings. When he passed, no, I mean, he was the only breadwinner. My grandma, I mean, four girls. So they ended up selling everything and it, all they know is Laredo, Texas. So they're like, we all know nobody here. So we're gonna go back to Laredo, Texas. But before he passed, my mom had met my dad. My dad, yes, Hispanic, Mexican, came in illegally, met my mom. They got married in Gary, um, lived out there for a little bit. My dad, when he got here, he arrived in Blue Island in Illinois. He lived there for a couple of years, met my mom, whatever. Went to Gary to help them over there. My mom grew up in Blue Island. I know she told you that when yeah. she was here and she went down the rabbit. Oh my gosh, she was so excited. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool to hear uh, people's stories like that. And then um, he, he went over there and he, uh, he was with his citizenships and stuff. He was helping my grandfather out. And when he passed, my dad's like, okay, I'll go back with you guys to Laredo. Like, cause I, I mean, I'm married to, your, to my mom and he's like, well, let's all go back. So they ended up selling everything 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 and my grandma was able to go down to Laredo she bought a house cash and then she moved everybody over there everybody went out there everybody was living there um and my dad just didn't like it he went to community college but then he already got his citizenship and everything he got rolling he signed up for the community college and he didn't really like because at that time Laredo was so small there was no businesses, there was no manufacturing. Was, dude, now it's so huge, everything. It's a port, so everything goes through there. So there's so much to do in Laredo now. But back then, it was so small. And my dad's like, no, I can't find work, and this and this and that. Like, I'm so used to Illinois already, Blue Island. So he's like, uh, how about this? Um, my two older brothers were born before, when my grandfather passed, they were still out there for like two, three years. And my two older brothers were born out in Gary and East Chicago. They all took off back to Texas. That's how I was born in Houston, Texas. Um, and then my dad's like, no, I'm gonna go back to Blue Island. And he came back by himself, started working, and then he called from my mom. He's like, you have to come back with me. You're, you're my wife. Like, And my mom's like, well, fine. And she left, like everything she knew. All she knew was her sisters and my mom and my grandma. So she went back and they pretty much, we pretty much lived out in Blue Island our whole lives. but. When we got there, when we, I was a baby, I was like two, three years old. Um, we, I grew up in Blue Island, lived in Blue Island all the way to about 17. And at 17, I was like, I thought I was big and bad and this and that. <laughs> of course, we all do at that age. And I was like, I don't need nobody. I don't need my family, I don't need my parents. And I ended up leaving, I made the mistake and I left and I lived on the street, lived with friends, um, met my ex-wife. That's down in Texas, right? Yeah, um, yeah. out here in, in um, Chicago. Oh. oh, but prior to that, yeah. Okay. Prior before all that, um, before I thought I was gonna leave the house, um, I had gotten to a, a fight in Eisenhower in Blue Island. And I was like, maybe I, I just need somewhere else to go. Maybe I, I, I need a different scenery. Like I need to get out of here for a bit. So I told my mom before like I moved out or whatever. I was like, how about if I go to Texas to go to school? How I go down there and hopefully something can change because I, I see myself going down the wrong path. So she's like, all right, she's like, uh, let's talk to your uncle from my my one of my aunts, her husband. Let's talk to him and see if he's willing to like take you in or whatever and you go to school out there. So I went down, I think it was at the beginning of the summer, we went down there and I took all my, because I already had everything planned that I was gonna go down and I'm gonna stay down there. So I took everything I owned, everything, all my shoes, clothes, and I was like, you, you haven't even talked to him yet. Like, he don't even, you don't even know if he's gonna say yes. So we went down there and I talked to him and he was like, hey, did you want to stay down here? That's cool. But little did I know that in Laredo, Texas, it's different school systems. There's only four classes a day. And those classes are about like an hour, 40 minutes each. Dude, it was bad. Yeah. So I ended up going to school there, but my uncle, was the one that taught me everything, the barbecue. So on a, on a daily basis, he, he was a janitor at the school. So he would he would get out at the same time I would, and we would get back to the house and he would be like, he, he was a drinker. So he would be like, I gotta go get my six pack. So when he would go and get a six pack, we would stop at this local, like it was a, it was a, a meat market with a liquor store. It's weird, but it was, <laughs> they had both in that store. 
Hey, it worked out for yeah. uh, him as I see where the story is going. Uh, and we, he was the, one, one day he was just like, let me hold this, let's make some ribs. So I was like, all right, man, I don't know about that, but okay. So he just got these ribs and I was like, but we don't have a grill, we don't have, we're going to do them on. But I mean, my uncle's Mexican, he can build anything you want, right? So he grabbed two uh, center blocks, threw them down, and I was just like, what are you doing? And over there, they use mesquite. Everything is mesquite. So you put down mesquite, lit it up, and I'm just like. Is that uh, like a Texas thing? Is that Texas what you mean? Yeah. I got you. It's a Texas uh, wood, and like it burns, and it, like it's like firecrackers, dude. And like if it picks something up, it will it like throw it like a firecracker. Choo, choo. And I was like, it's, it's kind of crazy, the mesquite. So we threw it, uh, we put the center blocks down, and he just came out of nowhere with this, like, uh, like uh, I don't even think it was a grill. Dude. It was. It looked like it came off of a grocery cart. Like he, he yeah. cut it off of there. That's some hood stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, he put it down and he just put some seasoning on there and I'm like looking at it. And from there, it just like started every like two or three days. Like, let's go get some more ribs, let's go get some more ribs. And then over there, what we know as Arachera, which is the skirt steak, mm -hmm. um, over there, for some reason they call it fajita. Here we know fajita as with green peppers. And yeah. That's not how they do it over there. It's like, it's totally different. Gotcha. So, he was like, let's get some fajita. And I'm like, fajita? I don't like fajitas. Like, I, don't, I don't like that stuff. And he was like, how do you not like it? You always get it when your dad comes down and you, you eat it. And I was like, no, I don't like the green peppers and the red peppers. Like, what are you talking about? And I was like, he's like, just, just come on. And we went and he was like, he pointed at the arrochera. And I was like, oh, the arrochera. And he's like, no, that's fajita. I was like, dude, it's arrochera. He's like, no, it's fajita. I was like, dude, okay, whatever. Whatever it is. So we got it, went back, grilled it. But he, he did it different from what we do out here. They just throw a regular seasoning on it. Over here, we put either lari, salt, pepper, lime, another layer of meat, lime, salt, pepper, lori. My wife, who has a Hispanic background, puts a beer in yeah. it when she marinates it. Yeah. And over there, they don't do none of that. It's just the seasoning. And little did I know that actually, from me doing that, you get more flavor. I, I, I don't know why, but when we put lime or beer, it kind of pulls the meat juices out, which is weird. I, I, I don't know exactly what But as you, as who you are in the barbecue scene, learning about the meats, you want the meat flavors. Too. Yes. You don't want to overpower it with these other things that are, yeah, they might be tasty here and there, but you know, from our aspect, we want yeah. that good meat flavor. Yeah, and so I see the juices. Yeah. So we did it like that. And little by little, dude, I was out there for maybe about six months. And every other day, it started becoming a normal thing, ribs, uh, cheddar. Uh, pork chops, uh, beef ribs. We just kept out there grilling, like just me and him. Just he'll be drinking his beer. I'll be just out there chit chatting. I have some of my buddies come over. And you what? Talk. 16, 17, 16, 18. 17. I was, uh, I would have been a junior here, but my credits, but their credit system over there was off. So instead of being a junior, they threw me as a uh, sophomore. Gotcha. So I'm like, dude, I'm a junior. I'm not a sophomore. But I mean, that, that's what it was. And I met people, whatever. And then I actually was like, I need to go back. I was like, I think I learned my lesson. I'm gonna stay away from doing all that stuff. Let them know I did. Came back and I got back into it. Yeah. But you had the skill of now yes. knowing barbecue. Knowing barbecue for my uncle. and The entry level skills. Yes. And, I, and I posted it on Instagram, I think like a couple of days ago, when, when I just recently went out there, just last week I went to Texas. And I talked to him and we were talking, I was like, dude, like from what you taught me to grill, I turned that into smoking. And from smoking now I know all this. Yeah. Like if you wouldn't, if I would've never came down here and you would've never taught me, I wouldn't know, I, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't right. be at this point in my life. Look at Because of what you did. Mm -hmm. So I was like, thank you. And he said, no, don't worry about it. You know, don't say it to me. Like it was just part of life and this and that. Like don't worry about it. And I was like, no, dude, like if you wouldn't took time and took me in, and done what you did and you didn't know you're just like this is normal for you look at what it what came from it like so yeah, it's a positive awesome. thing so he was like yeah and he's like let's take a picture and we took pictures and stuff and we didn't take a picture in front of the the, the exact uh grill because i mean i don't think he had it but he had another one that he had built like a welder and he plasma cut it and it was like kind of a bad the way they did it but i mean it still does what it's supposed to do yeah so we use that and when we're out there, we make fajitas and uh, we're pretty good. It was, it was good. And then that's um, right after when I got back, 
from, from Laredo that, uh, back then when I was younger. Got back over here and met with my friends again and still doing the bad stuff and doing bad things and thought that I didn't need nobody. And I ended up going on my own and met my ex-wife or whatever. Had my kids, once my kids were around, I dropped that mentality of being on the street and hanging around with people and stuff. And a, a friend of mine, and, it, and it's crazy because a friend of mine was, at the time when I had turned 20, my daughter was born, there was this young kid that used to hang around with us. He was about like 15. He was killed um, two days before my daughter was born. And I was literally with him that day. And then I left to go check on how she was with the pregnancy. And that same night, they killed him. So when my kids were born, I, I was like, what am I going to do if, if I bypass? Like, right. what are my kids going to do? It's a different so, perspective when you yeah. have kids, isn't it? So I was like, you know what? The same for me. And I just started working. <clears throat> we went ahead and uh, I, I started looking for jobs or whatever, becoming a man. And um, that's when I started making money. And I was like, uh, one, one weekend, I think it was like during summer, I was just like, it was already like 2000, year, the year 2000. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make a brisket. And... I'm like, let, let's try it out. And even at that time, the prices were pretty high in the brisket. It's what it is now. So I paid almost like 50 bucks for a brisket. And it was a, a select brand. It was not prime, it was not choice, it was select. Grabbed it, we bought it. I went to, I think at the time it was a Handy Andy, which would have been like Menards or something. Yeah. And they had a, a smoker, like this cheap one, dude. It was like really thin, like a 12 gauge or something. And the smoke was coming out of everywhere. And I, I, at that time, I thought I knew what I was doing, but I wasn't. I, I threw the wood in. It was so much smoke. And I was just like, it was so bad, dude. You couldn't, even if we put barbecue sauce on it, dude, it was bad. So I was like, yeah, let's just add as much barbecue sauce as we can to it and eat it like that. And then that's when I found out about um, the barbecue masters, the barbecue pit masters, the show. Yeah. And then I started watching that seeing what they would do and then I tried it again. I was like, let, let me try it again. So I tried it again and it was still bad. And at that time, I think I was doing all kinds of seasoning on it. I was using lard, I was using salt, pepper, I was using garlic, onion. Um, I don't know, for some reason, one time I remember throwing it in a, in a pot of water for, for some reason. I, I don't know why, but I did that. And let it boil for a little bit and then try to smoke it and that came out terrible and then um, I was like, uh, I bought a book. I don't remember what it, it was like a South Texas barbecue something. It was at Borders. I think back then the store was called Borders. We went there, we did the ex wife, we went and got it. And I brought it home and I was just reading through it and it, it, it taught me difference. Like, don't do this, do this, do this, do this. So I did exactly the way the book told me. And I went and bought, um, I was using hickory back then. It was all hickory wood. So now I'm just like, you know what? Let me try using what they said, oak and cherry. So they would always say post oak. I didn't know it was post oak. I thought they were saying oak. So I would get oak and I'll grab cherry and I'll throw them in. And I used to get the chunks. So they're like little chunks. Throw those in, light them up, get them going. The, that one came out decent. I'm like, okay, we're, we're on to something here. So from there, I had to wait like another month dude, just to now, get that. <clears throat> with all this, are you are you then uh, playing with like how long it takes, the temperatures, you know, because as you guys are hearing now, we went through not only just the learning, right? Then seasonings, then wood, uh, then you was talking about gauge steel, like all this stuff is gonna start to matter. And for everyone out there listening, when you get a good barbecue, you're now seeing how much goes in to getting that right. And, and then when we get more into his story, um, how he got it to be specifically how he likes it. And he can reveal as much as he wants and we'll get there. Um, but I love hearing how much goes into it to develop what is now a culmination of a great catering product into a business. So uh, please continue. So then we, we got into um, the, oak and the, the oak and the cherry using that. So on the next one, dude, I mean, since I had the two kids and we're running and I think at the time we were renting a house out in Hegwish. 
So now, have you that, started catering yet? At this point, you're still just no, doing it for I'm yourself. Just, I'm just, just doing it in. back backyard. Gotcha. Everything is still backyard. And then um, I went ahead and, and bought more brisket. But at that time, I remembered when I was growing up in Blue Island, uh, women's and uh, women's meat in Elsa yeah. on mm -hmm. 127. They sold to the public. So I'm just like, do I have that type of money though? So one day I went in there on a Saturday. I remember I picked up this brisket and it was like super small, dude. They went like 60 bucks. But at that time, I still didn't know the difference. I knew that there was a select choice in prime, but I didn't know the price points of what, what was what then. So I'm just like, he was like uh, prime and then he looked at it and he was like, oh, 70. And I was like, 70 bucks, man. 70 bucks <laughs> so I was just like man and I looked at it and he was like well we got a choice and I, I, I honestly I don't remember the branding and then he was like we had choice and I was like okay and he's like oh this was, this one would be about 50 and I was like well I got 50 uh, we could do that then. went ahead and got it took it home and I'm, I'm looking at the fat cap and I'm like okay let's they, they told me to do it different so let me try my way plus the way that they said so I started trimming off the fat on the top and like getting it like perfect. And then I, I remember doing a circle around it because it, I mean, it, like it's it's a it's a big dip and it comes like a, like a rectangle like this. So I'm like, if I cut the corners, what would happen like if I make it into a circle? So we're, I'm trying to figure everything out at that time. And back then I used to leave the fat cap in. Now I don't. But I, I took the fat, I left the fat cap on because I'm looking at it, I was like, dude, this thing's like hard. Like, what, how do you do this? And the knife that I had, dude, it was like from Walmart. So it, it's not going in. So I just yeah. left it. I'm like, hey, we're going to leave it like that. And then I used, that's when I, I made my first seasoning because of the, that book. So I used like the regular stuff, the paprika, the uh, garlic powder, salt, pepper. And they, at that time, that's why I was introduced to the 16 mesh pepper that they would always talk about but me being me I didn't know what that was I used regular McCormick pepper so I started using that got the pepper the paprika regular stuff um, cumin everything makes it it was pretty good brown sugar it was decent and it gave it a good flavor but it wasn't I remember when I when we went to Texas it tastes different like there was a different taste profile to it so I'm just like, this ain't the taste that I remember tasting growing up. When, we're, when we used to go down, because my mom used to t send us out there during the summers. So they would always take us to like barbecue spots and, and get stuff. And I'm just like, this this is not what it tastes like. There's something different here. And then uh, that's when I was introduced to Aaron Franklin. I heard about Aaron Franklin. So he was just on a start come up, like really starting to come up. And he would always talk about the salt, pepper, and that's it. Nothing else, nothing else. So I'm like, that's kind of weird. That's gonna taste nasty, dude. It's salt and pepper, what? But then I'm like, well, you know what? Let me try it. And I actually used cherry on that one. I used cherry wood, smoked it, and I had that cheap old uh, smoker, you know, smoking everywhere. And uh, tried it and it was, it was good. And I was like, hmm, this is pretty good. Yeah. So I was like, let's try it again, but like I said, it usually takes me about a month to collect the money to pay for it. Cause I, I mean, I was, I was young and I wasn't making as much and we were having kids and I had to pay for stuff. So I was like, I had to wait about another month to collect the money again to do it. So then that's why I was like, well, ribs don't cost that much. Let me just get some ribs. So I did the ribs. I did it like that the same way as a brisket and it tasted like garbage. So I'm just like, wait a minute, so why did it start to taste good for the person, but it's not tasting good for the pork? Like what? And then that's when he started talking about other stuff. And I started looking at it, like, huh. So we're using more of a South Carolina, North Carolina style for the butts, which is pork, pork butts, or ribs, whatever, versus the way they do the brisket in Texas. So that's how I, I learned it's a craft. So we're not doing a Chicago-based barbecue. We're not doing a Memphis style barbecue. We're not doing South Carolina. We're, we're grabbing from everywhere, and that's the style. So it's a craft style. It's not just a Texas style. It's not just North Carolina style. It's not Kansas City style. Everything's one. So it's a craft style. So we started doing. I, I started doing that. Did it the way I learned from the book that that's the way they do it in North Carolina, and it had the vinegar paste in it. And I was just like, God, I can see how they like it. 
but other people are not gonna like it. So I was like, other people are gonna have to learn to love it because this is the style of how they do it. If they don't like it, then they can go anywhere else and pick up their barbecue. I'm gonna do it like this because this is how originally they did it over there. So that that's how I kept it. And I was like, I'm gonna do it just like this. And then that's how I was introduced to the mustard-based barbecue sauce. And it ki kind of kills that vinegar taste to it, but it, the profile of the mustard-based barbecue sauce on top of the pulled pork, even on some of the ribs, man, dude, it, it, it just goes perfectly. But it was just a mixture of things learning as I was coming up on how that happens. We go to, I want to say 2011. 2011, I decide I don't want to be married anymore. I decided that it's over. I tried, it, it didn't work. So I went on my own and I lived on my own for a while. At the time, I never took my smoker with me. Through the process of all that, I couldn't get my smoker back. But it was just one of those cheap ones that you get from Menards or whatever. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try to save some money, paying child support by then or whatever, giving her money during the month. I was like, I'm gonna try to give me another smoker. So I went to Home Depot, I think, I think it was at the beginning of the spring, and they had one that didn't have the offset to the side. So I was like, damn. And I seen that it was like 40 bucks more. So I was like, man, I'm gonna have to wait like two more weeks because I knew next week I had to pay everything for child support. So what am I gonna do? I was like, man, I need this, I need to start cooking again. So I was like, I'm just gonna get this one. It's not gonna have the offset. I'll figure something out. For people who don't know, you want to talk about what an offset is versus like a traditional one or whatever. So uh, a, re a regular offset would be the firebox to the side. Mm -hmm. So you have a firebox to the side and all the smoke goes through there. Well, it will it'll make it through there. There's a hole into your regular grill, as, as you guys know, and then the smoke will go right through there into the chamber and it'll come right out the pipe. So that, it's not a direct heat source. Yeah, it's not direct. So I ended up getting a direct heat and I'm just like, dude, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna do this. And then a buddy of mine where I, I used to work at, he was like, dude, why don't you just take something from here, cover the wall and just open up a space of like 12 inches and, and put the, like, we'll cut, we'll cut a piece of steel, we'll measure it out at home. And then come here and we'll cut a piece of a sheet metal and we'll put it in there. So we tried that and it was like really flimsy, the sheet metal. And I was like, man, I, I gotta figure something else out. So I cut another piece of sheet metal, put it in there, and it was really flimsy. So then I took aluminum paper, like the real thick rentals, and I just wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it. Hey. And it was like four or five layers deep. And then I put it in there and it was holding the, the heat. And I would put the brisket or the ribs or whatever I was doing to the, to the left of it and the firebox would be to the right. It was not a real firebox. It was a made up firebox in a regular grill, like a red heat one. And it worked fine for, I'd say a couple of years. And Bring your mic a little closer. Oh, there you go. And then we, 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 I went ahead and used it like that. Got the, the brisket, the ribs, and it, it, it worked fine. And then by then I already knew what seasoning, what wood, um, what sauces to use for my, my regular stuff. Um, we went ahead and uh, I ended up moving to Whiting, Indiana, and I lived there for a little bit, and that's when I got with my girlfriend. When I got with my girlfriend, our first date, the first date that we went out to was to Famous Dave's out in, uh, what is that, uh, Berwyn, on uh, Harlem. Took her there, we ate, and uh, she's like, yeah, there's some pretty good bar barbecue. I was like, yeah, it's decent, but I mean, like, we came out at night, the places that I know are open during the day. So I was like, one day I'll take you to one of those so you can try really good barbecue, not yeah. just this stuff. So um, once we get through there, I'm, I'm working at my job over in uh, Gary, Indiana. Uh, we built Burgess. I was there for about 12 years. I'm with, with my girlfriend then, and I decided to leave Whiting to move in with her, but she lives on 35th and Western. So I'm just like, what am I gonna do with all my smokers? I had one, one stand-up smoker, and then I had the, the, the grill one. And I know she didn't have that much space, so I was like, what am I gonna do? So she happens to know the landlord, and I talked to the landlord, like she knew her on a personal level. 
And I talked to her and I was like, hey, do you happen to let me bring these smokers and like leave them out here against like the wall? Are you okay with that? She's like, yeah. So I, I took them with me and I was like, cause I didn't want them to go. I yeah. still had the stand-up one with me. So the stand-up one, I want to say is about 14 years old. So I've had it for about 14, 15 years already with me. Okay. So we went ahead and I moved over there, got with her. And then, I mean, we, I kept smoking, kept smoking, kept smoking and making our meets and everybody just started asking about it. Man, that shit good, that stuff's good. Like you do it for friends, family yeah. parties and shit? I would, I would do it just like regular stuff for like people like that, but I, I, wouldn't, I wasn't selling nothing yet. I was still considered like a backyard guy. What, in what year was this? This was uh, 2015. When we, uh, no, 2016 was when I moved in with her, 2016. We, got, we started dating in 2015. 2016, um, I went ahead and moved in with her and then I would say 20, 2018 in November was when I was hit with, uh, or October 2018. There was a new guy that took over the plant um, at where I was at. And he, me and him used to bump heads a lot. And I was a type where I already know how everything should flow because we build bridges. And, and I would always tell him like, let's do it like this, this, and this. And if he didn't want to, he would say like no, or he would say something. And I would, I would get smart and I'd be like, well, it is what it is. That's what I would always say. It is what it is. And I think he didn't like it too much. <laughs> and uh, just one day, the security guy, me and him were close and he comes into the office and I looked at him and I already knew what was it about. Because I, I, was, I was there for almost 12 years. I knew when they would fire somebody. Yeah. So he comes in and he has his paper and he was like, he's like, hey man, I'm sorry. And I was like, what? And he's like, you're gonna have to get all your stuff and go. I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, uh, you're, 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 um, what's it called? When you leave, when you're, you're not getting laid off and then you're going on your own. It's a, uh, what's it called? Like load or something. Like resi you're resigning. Oh. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, yeah, you are. I was like, what? And he's like, we're gonna pay you out six months. From, from today, you take all your four hundred one k everything, you're leaving. And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, and like this, you can still collect unemployment. I was like, why? What, what's going on? And he was like, well, between you and that guy, I mean, something happened and he didn't like it. So I was like, all right, man, whatever. So at that point I had to do it. I just finished buying the house over in Dyer. So I was like, oh my God, dude, like, what, what am I gonna do now? So I was like, I was like, man, and he was all like, oh, don't forget, we also have a severance. Since you were here for 12 years, you get the severance package. So I looked at the severance package and I was like, wait, do I still get six months? And he's like, yeah, you're going to still get the six months plus the severance package because you've been here for so long. We're going to give this to you. He's like, not that many people get it, but they're, they're offering it to you. The only thing is you can't say nothing bad about this company. Yeah. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. So like, you guys are pretty much bribing me. And he was like, <laughs> we, can't, we, can't say, we can't say it like that, but yet. So he's like, as long as you sign it, you'll get everything right now. So I was like, all right, cool. I was like, well, how much is the severance? He was like, uh, I think it was like 15 or something like that. So I was like, oh, man, that's, that's some good money. Yeah. It's like, all right, cool. Whatever. Plus six months of pay. Yeah, six yeah. months of pay. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's do it. Shitty situation. Not so bad then. Yeah. yeah. So I left it, and I was like, Dude, and it was weird because I met so many cool people there. I, like, I, I loved my job. Like, I used to love going there because there were so many people that you would talk to. Yeah. I mean, the plant was so huge. There was over like 400 people in that plant. So every day, I mean, there was this one older guy that was there. And I don't know about top, but like, we would mess with him so much because he had hair coming out of his ears. <laughs> it's called Grandpa Earmuffs. And like, he would always like, he would always weigh me down, like, because I was a supervisor. He would always wave me down like, hey, hey, and I would turn around like, I didn't like, I, he was talking to me, he was talking to someone behind him, like, who, him? And he's like, no, you, like, like, motherfucker, like, you, I'm talking to you, and I was like, him? He's like, no, you, like, he would get so mad, dude, I used to, I missed that, dude, I, yeah, I, I totally. could literally miss that, because he used to, we used to always mess with each other like that, and then we used to, when you guys would come in, they would measure, we would cut steel plates, and then we'll build it into, pretty much like Legos, into a bridge. The I beams, everything, webs to flanges to a beam. And there would be guys that were like, hey, Buzz, there's there's like two inches missing. I was like, all right, just uh, playing around. I was like, all right, just send it to Drummond and tell Drummond to call in a truck 
and send it to the plate stretcher. <laughs> and then they're like, the plate stretcher? I was like, yeah, it's in the back. And they're like, okay. And they'll go over the, the walkie talkies. Hey, Drummond. I'm like, what? Bud said, send it to the plate stretcher, call in a, a truck. And you can hear everybody in the background oh, laughing. On the, on the, the plate stretcher? Mm -hmm. what, what are you smoking? What are you talking about, a plate stretcher? There ain't no plate stretcher here. He's like, well, Bud said, send it to the plate stretcher. I was like, man, dude, I missed that. Yeah, but totally. I, get I mean, on, on the way home from losing like everything that you knew, like you're just like, oh, what am I gonna do? My first thing was, dude, I just finished buying this house in May. Now we're in November. I just bought the house. What am I gonna do from here? Yeah, because this severance and everything's only gonna last yeah. six months. Six months. Yeah. So I'm just like, man. And this whole this whole time, like. When, when I got with Jess, I was always like throwing her ideas. Like, man, I, I should buy a tow truck and, and tow stuff. Because your head's in that business mindset. Yeah. Tied yeah. It, obviously she's, like, this point. she's like, you know, you're always thinking about businesses, but you never do nothing. And I was like, well, my thing when I first used to talk about a barbecue business, I was like, dude, how do I don't sell food? What am I going to do with all that food? Like, it's going to go to waste. So now I'm wasting money. I was like, if I would get a tow truck, I'm not really wasting nothing because there's always cars that need a toll. And, and I you started, have no overhead until you drive. Yeah. yeah. And then I started thinking about, well, how about investments, like properties? And she's like, you don't even know how to fix anything. So I was just like, man, dude, like, I can never catch a break with you. Like, yeah. what's going on? So on the whole way home, dude, I'm just like thinking about, like, how is she going to feel? Hey, we need that person that pushes us, right? Yeah. And challenges us, us and calls us on our bullshit sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I get home. And then I, I think this happened on a Friday. No, this happened on a, on a Thursday. I want to say around like 10 a.m. And I usually stayed at four. They still, they, we would have to mandatory since I was salary. We had to mandatory stay there for 50 hours, no matter what. It's 50 hours you had to stay there. So we had the ring and I still hadn't called it because I didn't know what to tell her. So we had a ring and I pull up to the house and I'm sitting in the car. Dude, I'm, I'm sitting in the car this whole time. I'm there for like 40 minutes, dude. Just like, man, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna tell her? Like, is she gonna leave me? Are we gonna have problems? What, like, what's gonna happen from here? So she calls me and she's like, what are you doing at home? And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, I see, I see you from Ring. And I was like, oh shit, oh, I forgot about that. Damn it. And I was like, yeah, I gotta tell you something. She's like, what? I was like, well, it finally happened. And she was like, what are you talking about? I was like, they let me go. And like once that dude had taken over, dude, the, the plant, so many people had been fired. Like mm -hmm. they were cleaning the house. So I was like, and I would always tell her like, oh, so-and-so, they just fired so-and-so. Oh, they just let go. But at that time too, they were uh, letting go of workers that they would see that didn't work right. Like uh, if, you, if you would tell them, we need so much production by this time, if they seen that they didn't do it, they would be put on a list and then let go. So I was like, uh, they let me go. And the, her, her only thing was, her only thing was, we'll figure it out. Just don't, let's, let's hopefully not lose this house. Like, this is like the only thing that I'm worried about. We're going to do everything possible and we're going to work on it. We'll work with how to, how to get money, but we can't let this house go because it's, this is what we accomplished is what we got together and we can't let this go. Totally. So I'm just like, all right. And she's like, don't, and she's like, and don't forget, I got your back. Like, we're gonna figure this out. We'll, we'll figure this out. She's like, wait till I get home and then we'll figure it out. So I'm like sitting there, dude. I'm just like waiting for her to come home. I'm waiting for her to like, like go at me, like start talking stuff and then nothing. She came home, she gave me a hug. said, don't worry about it, we'll figure it out. And I'm, and I'm, the whole time that we're, she's, I'm waiting for her to get home, dude, I'm online. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And Pitmaker Vault happens to put up a, like an ad for their the vault. And I'm like, man, I, I used to love that thing. Like I want one of those. And and I looked at the price and it was only like, I think it was like 4,500 shipped to the house. So I'm like, nah, like it can't happen. So that was Thursday. Friday morning I wake up, the money's in my account. So I'm looking at the money and I'm just like, Dang, that'd be a bold move. So I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to do it. I, I called her and I texted her. I was like, how about we do this? And she's like, I'm going to back you up 100%. But remember what I told you. My number one concern is this house. 
as long as you can make that work, I got your back. So I was like, good shit. I was like, cool. Dude, it took literally two days. That happened Friday. Friday, they were eight, I was able to, to get it at like 10 in the morning. And they were able to uh, uh, board it up and put it on a pallet, palletize it, everything. And have it on a truck Friday night. Dude, Monday morning, they had already called me. And I, they had said that it would take about a week that they would get a hold of me. And then on, on Monday morning, um, that company, Sai, Sai Transport, or whatever, called me. And they're like, hey, we got this package for you. Um, do you need a lift gate? And I was like, wait, is this a smoker? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. So I was like, all right. So from losing my job Thursday, by Monday, I had this smoker. God dude. damn. So I'm just like, oh, shit. Dude, I, I went all out, dude. I went um, to this fabrication shop in Cherville, bought some pans. I bought, like, uh, some square tubings to to put it into that smoker. Like, I'm, Do you guys I'm gonna... understand what he's saying right now? I just want to put this in perspective in case you missed it um, with his story. He lost his fucking job on, like, a Friday. Or Thursday, and then by Monday, his ass had invested forty five hundred dollars in himself in this smoker, and just got fucking after it, back to fucking back. Well, <laughs> no, no, that's fucking moving. Oh. It's meant to be, right? It, that came up like that, but that's fucking awesome. So this was. So now we're. This was, um, if I'm not mistaken, the day that they fired me was like thirtieth of October, which was a Thursday that Monday or Tuesday would have been like the second of November or whatever. So once that smoker came in, she's like, we need to start doing stuff like now. So I was like, all right, cool. So I started doing like all kinds of like business cards and flyers and I was, stuff. I was spending money where I shouldn't have spent. It. Sure. And then I'm, I'm seeing all these dollars go out. But at, now that I think about it, I was like, dude, that was like the dumbest move ever. Like you should just got the smoker, waited a little bit, figured out how you're going to move this product not buy all this other stuff that you don't need right now. So I'm I'm just doing all kinds of stuff, dude. And then at this time I had a phone that really didn't work. So I'm putting a phone number on a business card that doesn't have nothing to do with it. Um, we made the uh, Buzz and Barbecue, I think, in front of the, the Instagram. And I'm, I'm just doing all kinds of stuff, trying to figure stuff out. Well, and I'll tell you, we did something similar the first, uh, when we opened Tinley store. We were crushing it. Um, both stores were doing really good. And we had, I had started to put money into things for like catering stuff and uh, different things we wanted to do within the store. It's like reworking the menu, paying stuff for design, um, design of like interior, but also like the menu design because <clears throat> the money was rolling in and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna keep going. I made the same sort of mistakes as you. I should have doubled down on what got us there instead of thinking, oh shit, we made it, right? Kind of like you did, you get really excited. Oh, yeah. Right? So yeah, I, really I understand excited. exactly what you're saying. And that's why I think we connect so much because it's so similar what you have to learn along the way and learn the fucking hard way yeah. to get to where you're where you're at. So the story is fucking fantastic because it's a ton of what I've done. Yeah. And then from there, I'm just like, oh, man, what, what are we gonna do next? What's the next move? What's the next move? I was like, okay, it's November. My, my my thinking right away was, all right, we're in November. Why am I gonna get the LLC with a tax on it? If I got two more months, I'm gonna have to pay tax on whatever I do. Let's not do that. Let's wait till the beginning of the year and then do it. So my girlfriend's like, yeah, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from, but wouldn't you wanna get it now? And I was like, no, I was like, I really don't wanna pay taxes on that stuff. So that's when um, 2019 comes in and 2019 um, COVID hit. So we already had plans since I was already working at an old job before we left, we had planned a trip to Hawaii January 2nd of 2019. So my whole thing was like, dude, I had to get a job. I got the smoker now, but we're gonna about to spend like $5,000 on this trip. Can I afford that? So I'm just like, man, like, but I, I owed it to her because we used to always go traveling a lot. Me and her, we would always go to California. I was already three weeks, three week vacation where I was at. We'll go to California, we'll go like constantly, California, California, California. We we'll go to Florida here and there. We One day we're just decided on a Thursday, like, hey, or on a Friday, hey, let's just go to New York. 
we just drove to New York out of nowhere. And it sounds like Alex and me, my wife and I, yeah. So we were just like, <clears throat> just constantly traveling. So I was like, man, I owe it to her. She's never been to Hawaii. I'd never been to Hawaii. So I was like, all right. And uh, our friends that are in California were going to meet us in Hawaii, at Maui. So we went ahead. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Do it. I, I don't know if I had like a minor heart attack, but dude, you can even tell her when, when we got on the plane from Chicago to, we had to go to San, uh, not San Diego, uh, San Francisco. And from San Francisco, we had to take that one to Maui. So on the way to San Francisco, dude, I, she's like, you're, you're losing color. Like you're look you're looking pale. And I was like, man, it's hot, it's hot. And she's like, how's it hot? It's January. Yeah. We're going over the Rockies. It's like yeah. freezing cold. Like, what do you mean it's hot? I was like, I, I feel hot. Like it's it's hot. She's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm feeling all right. She's like, but you're not. You're, you're pale. So I'm like, I'm scared. She's like, oh no. When we get to San Francisco, we're gonna take you to the hospital. I'm like no, we're going to fucking Maui. We're going. Like it, we're not stopping. We're gonna go. And she's like, you, you're not. I'm looking at you and you don't look right. I was like, let me just get to San Francisco. Let's get off the plane. Let's get something to eat. And then we'll go from there. But I'm diabetic. So I'm thinking maybe something, something's wrong with my sugar. Sure. Maybe a minor heart attack. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. We get to San Francisco, dude. And I'm fine already. I get down. We go get something to eat. And she said, you're probably just hangry. <laughs> she said, you need a Snickers or Roseanne? She said, you need a Snickers or Roseanne? I'm like, man, whatever. Yeah. So we, I get some sugar in me, and you get, I don't know, we got some like sandwiches or something, and we ate. We got to our, our, our layover, we actually got there a little late, because our layover in San Francisco was like four hours. For some reason, we got there within the hour. So I was like, we were just able to get our sandwiches and then board right away, and we are able to get out. We get to Maui, dude. We were there, dude. We are looking at everything, and I'm just like, man, forget everything that's going on right now. I'm taking this in. Hundred percent, what you should do. So I'm getting there. We get there. We call Airbnb. And they're like, "Sorry, we had a problem with the with the apartment." Fuck, man. We're in Maui. We had planned all this. Everything was supposed to go smooth. Now we hit a bump in the road. But she's like, "Hold on." She's like, "We actually have property on this resort." And then we're like, "Well, we can't afford it." She said, "Well, it's our mishap." we'll cover it so nice. like, uh, okay good. so like everything was falling into place so we're like all right cool dude this place was legit on the first floor dude it was right off of the ocean like literally awesome. off of the ocean so at night um we were able to leave the the doors open and okay. just had the screen locked dude all night you could hear the ocean beautiful and i was just like dude I, I'm, I'm an early waker so i would wake up like Early riser, I would get up at like five in the morning. Every, even on Saturdays and Sundays, dude, I'm still up at five in the morning. Yep. So I got up and I made some coffee and then just rose over. Say, go back to bed. I was like, it's beautiful. Like, you do not hear that. Like, that's. It's like, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I was like, you're tired, but I, I'm not. Dude, that's how I am on vacations too. It's beautiful, right? It's something we don't get to do all the time. Uh, so I'm up early as hell like that, drinking my coffee, a couple hours before everybody else, just chilling, enjoying. Yep. And we, I, I, I go out onto the thing, and then the resort has like this fence. I open up the fence, and it's, and it's literally the beach is right there. And I just sit down, take everything in. And then we had like trips planned to go to the Black Beach, the Red Beach, dude, all that was beautiful. Dude, it's literally like 20 miles, but it's the terrain's like this way, and that way, and this way, and that way, off the cliff, dude. It's like literally off the cliff. Like if you look over, you, you're gonna fall. And there's cars also coming, so it's it's like a, a car and a half wide. So you would have to let the person on top come down first and then you go up. And then it's, if you're going back down, you gotta turn the corner and wait for that person to come up and then you go down. So it's it's really bad to get out there. And it, it's 20 miles and it took us two and a half to three hours just to get there. Right. And 20 miles. And I was just like, dude, how, how is that possible? But what, dude, once you get to the Black Beach, like the Black Beach to me, Beautiful, dude. We took in everything. I was just like, that's what my parents said. They got, uh, they had their honeymoon in Hawaii and love it, uh, yeah. loved it. I've never been, so. Dude, Ma yeah, Maui's, yeah. Maui's like yeah, so perfect. beautiful. Dude. Yeah, so beautiful. And we stayed in Lahaina, 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 I think. And if you go go to the Lahaina resorts, dude, man. All man, right, I'm putting it in my beautiful. notes, and when my wife hears this, she's gonna fucking Google it and plan something. I'm sure. So. Uh, and it's right next to like a, there's like a bar right there, and then they have one of those uh, uh, 
when they go and they dance and they, they bring in all, all the food, I forget what it's called. A luau. Yeah, yeah, luau. Yeah. Luau. Dude, we had that luau. It, it was kind of expensive, but dude, the experience was perfect. Cool. And then it was right at night, so you would see the sun also go down awesome. while they're doing all this. Yeah, it was fucking love so it. cool. Yeah. We get back, and I'm just like, okay, that's over. Time to hit. Time to grind. And uh, I get the phone call. We still didn't know about COVID. We, when we got back, as we're coming back, that's when we're hearing about China getting affected. Like there were all their numbers started going up. So we we had got back and I was like, ah, that's that's over there. Ain't got nothing to do with us. And uh, I get the phone call from my mom, my uncle, the one that's that taught me everything. He's uh, he's like a drinker and a smoker, and, and something happened, like, and he got put into a coma. And he's not doing good. So I'm just like, dude, I haven't seen him in so many years. I, I want to go and see him. So my mom calls me and my dad, and my dad at the time took off to Mexico because he, once the winter comes, he's already retired. Once the winter comes, he's gone. Yeah, that's how I'm going to be. He's For like, sure. I'll, I'll see y'all later. Yep. So my mom calls me and she's like, I don't, I don't know how, to, how I'm going to get down there. You know, I could take your dad's truck, but how am I going to get all the way down there to Laredo? I don't have nobody. I'm already, I'm still looking for work. Like, what am I going to do? So she's like, are you willing to go with me? And I was like, yeah. I was like, but I just had an interview where I'm at now. And he was like, Were you, are you able to start on Monday? And this, I think, was Tuesday? No, Monday Monday, and for the next week to start. Um, she would, And this was also Monday when she called me. So I was like, I just had an interview right now. I'm not sure if I got it. I was like, but he said if I'm ready to work, next Monday would be the day that I would start. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go with you. And then she's like, can you just take me down there? And then I'll fly you back. I'll buy you your ticket. So I'm just like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll do that. So we took off that night. Like that same night she came. And then we took off in the morning to, to Laredo. Dude, we got there in like about 24 hours, dude. I, I did it one straight shot all the way down. And then we got down there and we went straight to the hospital to see what, where he's at. And uh, he wasn't doing good, dude. He was, he was in a coma. And we were there holding his hand, like, you know, just stop doing what you're doing. You, you will get better. Like, just, and I don't know if he, I mean, I'm, I'm just like telling him stuff, thinking that he could hear me. Yeah. I know he can't hear me, but hopefully he could hear me. Right, subconsciously, yeah. you know, like, yeah. So I told him all that. And then uh, and my mom sent me back on Sunday. I was, we were there every day. Every day we would go and we would go see him every day. And then Sunday, um, I f we flew out of Austin. Well, I flew out of Austin. She drove me up to uh, San Antonio on Saturday. We stopped at some barbecue places in, of course, San, San Antonio. And then we went to the hotel in Austin. And then I uh, flew out Sunday morning, got back here in Chicago Sunday to so start work Monday. So I went ahead and started my new job where I'm at now, iron worker. And then uh, we're, we're little by little, I started taking in uh, catering jobs. This was 2019 of January. Had you done any festival type stuff? No. Yeah, pop ups or anything? Pop ups, nothing like that. So I'm doing small things like um, if anybody wants catering, like if you want to pull pork, uh, butt, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And it's usually about five, six pounds. And I think at the time I was, I was like undercharging, dude. I was like, give me 30 bucks and then that's it but not thinking i'm thinking like i'm i'm charging a lot but I'm, I'm really not because all the time that you're taking to cook that yep the seasonings the 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 wood that is taken yep. the time that is taken your time uh the meat pricing like yeah. everything and yep. not only that you're using a lot of wood just to cook that one pork butt. it's it's right now what you want to do is cook so many of good quality meat one time and you're saving on that totally yeah at that time i, I dude i was looking at that so i was doing 30 bucks 40 bucks and just doing one in that big ass smoker and it took a lot just to warm it up totally so i'm using all this wood dude and, and the, uh, back then i used to use a lot of uh, bag wood from uh b and b and i used to use oak their post box and they they bring it from texas so and then there's only like maybe six logs in there for like 20 bucks. Yeah. And I was going through like two bags. That was, that was 40 bucks. Yep. So I'm not making no money. 
So I, at the time, I'm like, oh, Again, yeah. learning the hard way. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm doing good, this and that. And then this was only on the weekends, because I'm, now I'm working. And then we fast forward to May of that year. So COVID's hit, COVID's hitting. And then I'm, I, during this, I decide it's time to get the LLC. So I thought it was gonna be like this long process and it's gonna take forever to do it. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to do it, dude. Yeah. It, I would literally open up the laptop, punch everything in. And then it was like, I think in, in Indiana, I think tops was like everything, everything, everything was like 120. Yeah. So I paid that and I'm just like, hmm, that was easy. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Did that. Now I got my LLC. And then that's when I was like, okay, now I can get meat wholesale pricing. So I called the guy and at this time, I'm still not getting like a whole box worth of orders. So I called this one guy and uh, now I, I work with him with Wichita. I called them and they're like, uh, well, you gotta buy everything by a case. So if you want a brisket to score to a case, I, I think at that time it was like, I don't know, like 280 bucks, 300 bucks a case. I'm like, oh shit, like, what am I doing? Yeah. And then he was like, well, you know, pork was this, and you get a whole thing of box for like, I don't know, I, don't, I forget what it was, like 120. So I was like, you know what, give me some of those. So I bought that, and I was just like, well, what am I gonna do with all this pork bread? Like, how am I gonna move it? So then she's like, well, just do a pop up or do a, uh, an event. And I was like, well, I don't know how to do that. So we started doing curbside. Ah, but you're gonna learn. Yeah. <laughs> so we did curbside from the house. So we went ahead and did the curbside. And we would, and I think every weekend we would do like the 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 meal would be a sandwich of uh, pulled pork, bag of chips, or we used to do uh, cold pastas, and love this, uh, coleslaw, potato salad, and then you decide on what you want for the can of pop for like I think it was like fifteen bucks they used to do. So we started doing that because I didn't know how to move all that product. Yeah. So we did that, and then that that started growing. And it grew and it grew bigger and it grew bigger and it grew bigger. But then I started getting scared because I'm doing this on the ground. I don't I don't have a kitchen. I don't have a commercial kitchen. What's gonna happen when the health inspectors get me? Like it's 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 a it's it's scary. Yeah. Like you don't you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. And then I at this time by this time I already know a lot of people and I'm following a lot of people from Texas, people from California. Um, I met like Eddie O's from Houston, Robert Sierra from like San Marcos. Uh, like just so many people, people from California Heritage, like so many people and everyone's doing underground stuff. Yeah. Moose Craft, we would, when we go to California, we used to go to Moose Craft at Smokersburg. So it's like a, like a flea market and they do it there. So like, I'm, I'm just, they, they don't know who I am, but I know who they are. So I'm, I'm going, I'm getting this food and trying it. I'm just like, man, it's some good stuff. But a lot of people are doing underground. So I'm just like, I had them and tell you, well, if they could do it, we could do it too. Yeah, Let's do this out too. Until somebody comes knocking on the door and like, hey, you can't be doing this. Yeah. So God forbid, you know, I mean, if they hear, it, they, they never came. Yeah, sorry. you can't do yeah. shit to us now. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> legit now. Sorry. Either way, you got to do what the yeah. fuck you got to do. Yeah, you got to do it. I mean, it's 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 messed up to say, but you, you got to do it, dude. Like, because you never know what's gonna happen. It's not Just messed take, up to say. take that yeah. chance. What what's the worst that can happen? A lot. Well, I heard of some people like the taco guys out in the city when they get hit dude like in the city like the plan's only like a hundred bucks like i understand it's a hundred bucks to me like a hundred bucks i still had the mentality of being cheaper so like a hundred bucks like shit a hundred bucks but after you think about it you're making so much money a hundred bucks really isn't that much that's what happened to us at uh tinley store when we were doing permits and stuff for the build out the city was dragging their feet waiting for me and i couldn't wait i had a deadline right we put our own fucking money in we need to start selling yeah. so i did all the work and just paid the fines on the permits uh, because they inspected it. I knew it was going to be okay because I used people that know what they're doing. And all I did because I was losing days and days of sales. And for us, that's a couple thousand dollars a day. I was like, if I get open a week earlier, that could be ten to fifteen thousand mm dollars. -hmm. I'll pay the hundred dollar per electric fine, plumbing fine, whatever. So I did that, and and I don't think they liked it. And perhaps in hindsight, I wouldn't have done it. But at that point, it was a decision I had to make. Yeah. And I paid the fucking fines instead of waiting. Yeah. Bro, our stories are fucking wild similar. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, well, I went ahead and got the LLC in May. And we started doing the curbsides. And then I get introduced. Well, the people that we go used to go to California a lot. Mm -hmm. Her brother, her name's Melina. 
her brother AJ is South Ave Catering. Okay, yeah. So uh, I, she hooked us up in October of 2019, and he did like this Tim Burton thing. And he's like, yeah, hook me up with a, with a brisket, and then we'll just say it's Buzz and Barbecue Sandwich with South Ave Catering, so we'll do it a, uh, a collab. Cool. So we did that, and it, 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 it drew in more people. Like my Instagram started going. So I was like, oh man, that's pretty cool. And then AJ introduced me to Mike and Krista from South by Southeast. Met them and they're like, oh yeah, dude, we need, we need to get you on the podcast da, 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 and let's get you on here. So we went ahead and started becoming friends, started like going to, by this time he had, AJ was trying to do pop-ups. And then that's when COVID was like starting to slow down a little bit in 2019, but then um, well, that would have been 2020. Yeah. Because then it, like things started to open back up a bit more. Yeah. So which Jan is helpful. January of 2020, I think it was. No. Yeah, was it? No, because it would have been one year already. So 2021. Yeah. 2021 was the year he did his first or his first event at, um, what was it at? Pilsen Art House. And he was like, do you want to jump in on it? This was, I've never done anything like that. I never did an event. I never did a pop-up. I did none, nothing like that. And I was just like, dude, I don't, I don't know how to do this. Like, he's like, no, just be, just bring your stuff. Put it, at that time, I, we already had bought those catering containers. And um, I was like, all right, I'm going to make all the food, put it in there, and just bring it. And I think I, I, I kind of did it wrong because I did a platter not knowing like what people would want. Some yeah. people like if it's, it's something small like that, they, they want something finger foods. Yep. <clears throat> so I went the wrong way and I went and did a whole barbecue platter, but they still bought it. And then I was just like, wow, this, this is pretty cool. Like we sold out, like yeah. this, this is good. <clears throat> and then we did that one. And then in January, oh, February, we did the uh, Bourbon on Division in the city. Mm -hmm. We did that. We did a pop up there, and then that one we we pretty much sold out. I think we had a couple of brick tips left, but everything completely sold out. So we did that one, and then little by little, more people started reaching out to us like, "Do you want to do a pop up here? Do you want to pop up over here?" And little by little, we did it, and we grew to where we're at right now. Like from that, we grew to where we're at, and then that's when from the pop ups and the catering, yeah, yeah. and knowing. Um, AJ and then South by Southeast, Krista and Mikey, they introduced us to this guy named uh, Dave from Taco Day, where mm -hmm. we're at for Pierogi yeah. Fest. And he's like, are you, are you guys willing to do a Pierogi Fest? And then I was like, I don't know, man. I've never done nothing that's that big. That's a big ass fest. That's a huge fest. <laughs> so when he said that, I think this was like in February. Yeah, February. And um, dude, I only had that stand up uh, smoker, the green one. So I'm just like, man, dude, I, I don't know. Like, I need something bigger. If I'm going to feed these many people, it's, I, I need something bigger. Well, so, it's, it's nearly impossible for anybody to feed that amount of people. Uh -huh. For anyone listening out here, Pierogi Fest, to me, is probably second biggest to, like, Taste of Chicago. Yeah. Or something. Like, you don't get bigger than that, so, like, you're probably going to sell out, and, like, you just can't keep up with the demand. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wild, dude. Yeah. And I think I went with, um, when we did, well... So he, he told me in, in February, can you do it? And then I was like, well, I don't know, let me think about it. He said, well, think about it and get back to me. So I got into the mindset, of, all right, well, how am I gonna do this? I only had this smoker. So at the time I jumped on Facebook uh, Marketplace, there's a guy out in uh, Lamont. He had a 250 gallon. So I called him and I was like, hey, uh, can I look at the smoker? And he's like, yeah, dude, we're there bullshit. I was, we're out. dude, it was just like right now, outside. So we went, drove in, and I think it was snowing during the snowstorm to his house. Yeah, probably. We get to his house, we get there, and I'm, I'm looking at the at the smoker, dude. I'm just like falling in love, dude. I see the smoker, I was like, man, dude, this is exactly what I want. And we had the four, 4,500 in cash, because that's what it said they wanted. We had it in cash, ready to go. And then he was all like, uh, well, I have another guy coming and checking it out. I'm like, wait, what? I was like, dude, I can give you the 45 that you said or best offer. I got money in hand. Yeah. He said, no, I, I, I at least owe this guy for him to see it because I told him. So I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. Something's not right here. Yeah. So I'm just like, all right, man, cool, whatever. Just let me know. And then I, I started driving home. And then he texted me like, he was like, how about if he's offering me 
uh, 52. Can you do better than that? Oh, uh, this guy's playing games now. Yeah, and I was like, oh, you know what? No, I'm, I'm okay. Like, I, I already, I already seen it. Yeah. And I do like, I had 45 yeah. K in. in you it, went from in 45 it. to 52. Yeah. I was like, I know yeah. what you're trying to do now. You're yeah. trying to bid. Um, I'm, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So I'm just like, no, I'm okay. You know, thank you very much, but I, I, I don't, I don't want it. So he's like, all right, thanks for looking at it. I was like, all right, whatever. And then that's when I was like, I've been following Big Phil for years already. Mm -hmm. So Big Phil had had posted something up too a couple of days prior that he's starting to get uh, more and more uh, work. So I was like, man, I was like, hopefully I can get on that line soon. And I, I well, I'm thinking about Pierogi Fest. So I was like, man, this is the only way I'm gonna be able to get it because I already know Moberg, uh, Syntex, uh, who Austin Smoke, dude. Their, their list is like an, a, almost a year out Damn. just for bills. Yeah. So I'm like, man, dude, like I, I'm not gonna be able to do it. So I was like, uh, I called Big Phil. And I was like, hey, I'm so and so. I'm looking to see if I can jump on the list. And then he was all like, uh, well, I'm all the way out to like August. I was like, you know what? I was like, thanks, but I, I, I'm not gonna be able to do it then. And then he, he called me back like within like 15 minutes. He's like, wait a minute. He's like, when do you need it by? And I was like, well, I'm trying to do this fest and I need it for, what was it, in July? Yeah. So I was like, I, I, I need it by June. No, mm -hmm. I need it by May. Cause there, there was another event we were gonna do. And for May, at the end of May. And then he was like, uh, yeah, I need it done. So I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, uh, what do you need from me on my side? He's like, well, I need half the deposit. Like, you know what, dude, I have all the money right now. I'm the type of person, if I see that money, it's gonna, I'm, be, I'm, gone. I'm, it's gonna be gone. <laughs> so is there any way I could just send you the full amount right now? And he's like, he, he said too, he's like, dude, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm the same way, he's like, yeah, go ahead. If you wanna pay the whole thing right now, you pay the whole thing. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't mad about that. Uh, and then I called him like mid-May to see how we were doing. He's like, dude, I, I got backed up a little bit. I was like, damn, like I, I had this event in May. So I was like, I could probably get this one done with just that smoker. I was like, but I, I really need that one by the beginning of July, dude. Like, I really need it. And he was like, well, I'll try everything I can to get yours done. Um, but it's going to it's gonna be hard. And I was like, please, dude, like, I, I really need it, though. Like, I really... He's like, all right, I'm, I'm willing to work with you, but we, we, we got to get this other stuff done too. And I was like, all right, man, thanks. And then it comes right into like mid June. I called him and he's like, dude, I just started working on yours. I was like, fuck, man. I was like, Pro Fest is like a couple of weeks away. You're just starting. Like, man, dude, but he knocked it out. Good shit. He knocked it out and he called me and it was like two weeks prior to Pro Fest. And I was like, man, I still need time to learn the smoker. Yeah, right. Because you can't just grab the smoker and think you're you're gonna be oh, good at it. temperatures and testing everything. Everything is different. It's it's a different frame. It's a different smoker. It's different. I was gonna use different wood. Um, the techniques, like everything, dude. And I was like, yeah. oh, man, I got two weeks to figure this out. So, uh, what's his name? Uh, my brother-in-law, Carlos. Uh, I mean, he, dude, he's always willing to work with me, and like, he's if I need this, like, dude, he's a, he's a really good dude. And I was like, hey, Carlos, you know, I need to go down to Texas, pick the smoker up. You got a truck? I was like, uh, you willing to go with me? And can we use your truck? He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, let's go. So I called work, and I was like, hey, I think it was like on a Thursday or something. I was like, I'm not coming in. I'm not coming in the rest of the week. And they're like, all right, you know, whatever. Go ahead, take the days off. So, dude, we took off. Like, shoom, we drove straight all the way down to uh, Cattle Mills. It's right outside of Dallas. Got to Cattle Mills early in the morning. Talked to Big Phil. And my brother-in-law, he's into to guns. So there was this, like, big ammo store across the across well, I mean, it's it's Texas. Texas. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so he was all like, huh. He's like, let's go over there because we talked to Big Phil. Well, we went to Big Phil's shop, and the guy's like, oh, he went to go take pictures of your smoker. So I was like, all right, cool. So we went across the street, across the express because it's uh, I-35 so it's on the opposite side so we went to the opposite side and uh we seen that and we went in there dude he's going like he, he looked like a little kid in a candy store dude he's like I want this I want this I want this yeah. I want this he's looking at everything he's like all right yeah I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that he got his ammo he couldn't get a gun because he's seen this gun that he liked and he's like he couldn't get it because federal stuff like the transfers and stuff yeah so he's like man dude I would love to have this gun over there you can't get this gun over there in Illinois because of all the, yep. the laws and stuff so he was like, oh, man, whatever. So we ended up going to Waterbury and getting some birds. He never had it before. 
So I showed him that and he loved it. They had the, the salsa one. And then we were like, all right, man, we gotta go back and pick up the, the smoker and head back. Like, dude, we went straight there to get it and sh drive straight back. So he went ahead, we went ahead, went back, talked to Big Phil, dude, we started chit chatting, dude. That, that was a big, like, no, no. I, I knew we had to leave right away. But once you start talking to people, like, yeah. what you love doing and they love doing, like, you just, dude, you just keep talking and talking. And you, last, you, you lose time. Yeah. That. And then we're there for like another two hours, dude, just bullshit. Me and Big Phil, just bullshit. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, oh, man, I, I need to get back home. So we ended up leaving. Oh, we were there. Before, when we were talking to to the guy, and he's like, they, they went to go look for, they went to go take pictures of your smoker. I was like, hey, dude, does anybody out here have this certain type of wood that, that I use? That's certain wood I don't want to let nobody know about that. Yep. Part. So and he was like, yeah, he's like, uh, just Facebook market it, and there's a couple of people here. He's like, we're trying to get that wood here too, so when people buy the smoker, we'll have the cords of wood that they can buy from us, and then they can take it with them. Yeah. So I was like, all right, Smart. cool. So he gave me the phone number and they don't answer. So my brother-in-law, he gets on Facebook and he finds the people that we go to now. It's off of a ranch. And he he got a hold of them and he was like, yeah, just go ahead and come and we'll, we'll go ahead and serve you guys. I was like, all right, cool. Well, he said, all right, cool, whatever. And then he was all like, uh, hey, Buzz, like, this looks kind of, I'm looking this up. And it, it's out in the boonies, dude. Like, you want to go? And <laughs> like I was just sketch like, as fuck. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, man. He's like, man, you hear about, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre stuff, dude. It, it looks legit, legit yeah. the way you're yeah. going in. Yeah. So we went ahead and picked up the smoker already from Big Hey, Phil. you should have got those guns, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, my brother, I carry these guns. Yeah, okay, good. Left. All right, good. And he, yeah, I mean, he has two blocks and he has one right here. And he's like, just remember there's no one down there. Yeah. Just in case you need it. So I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. So we're, we're going down this road. And then all of a sudden, it turns into a, a one-lane road. And from the one-lane road, it turns into dirt road. So like, oh, shit. Like, where are we at, dude? And then he was like, well, we're looking at, by then, GPS, I can't find a yeah, signal. Yeah, you're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah, I don't have a signal, but you can, the GPS already tracks, and they tell you exactly where to go. So it takes us off onto this farm road, farm road, and then it, it, it gets all, like, just dirt, and we're just like, oh, man. So we're following and following and following, and boom, all of a sudden, you get a signal. It's like, all right, cool, we're, we're safe. So we get through, and then all of a sudden, we get to the front of the house where it told us, and they had, like, those up. Big like uh, um, metal doors, like the huge ones, yeah. you know, on Texas. Yeah. And we get there, and the dude, like this guy, comes up, and I, I feel bad because I don't, I don't really judge people, but when like you're scared of something, you you, you feel that judgment. Sure. And I seen this guy, and I was like, oh shit, like we're we're this ain't good. So I seen him, and I was just like, oh shit. And he was like, hey, just come on, come on in out to the property, and he. I'm found, found mistake, I think one of them had like a shotgun on the golf sure, cart. Sure, they also don't know who the yeah. fuck is coming either. So I'm just like, <laughs> oh shit, like, yeah. man. And that, at this point, me and my brother-in-law were just like, let's just, let's just hope for the best that they're, 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 they're going to serve us the wood. But we we seen where the cords of wood were at. So yeah. we're like, okay, they're, they're going to sell us wood. So we get all the way over there. Dude, these people end up being the sweetest, most kindest people in the world. Nice. Right? We get down, they, we we uh, we threw it on, well, I don't know if you see my smoker, I had that mm -hmm. in the side, mm -hmm. and we put the wood there, and he's like, if it doesn't fit, we can throw it in the back of the truck. Dude, I took like, I want to say a half a cord, a half a full cord for like 80 bucks, which would be out here, I would say more like about 170, give or take, because you, you would see one for about 280, 290 for a full good out here and over there now I'm getting them for like about 200 nice. but that specific wood out yeah. here anywhere around here in any place that you go to go get that wood is 700 dollars god damn so I was like yeah I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go oh, get yeah. that I'm gonna go get that yeah. like I, I'm, I'm willing to take that drive because I, I don't yeah. care so he hooked us up we're talking and he was just like we're so talking with them and they got that slang that Texas slang and the lady that his wife, like, we're talking, and she's so sweet, dude. She's talking to us. And said, whenever you guys want to come back, come back. You know, we're, we're here to help you guys and this and that. We hope everything goes good. And we became friends. Yeah. We were Facebook friends cool. on Instagram and everything. And then we went back again. 
I want to say in August or September, we drove back down there to get more wood. And when we got there, this time I took Jess with me and uh, she she seen Jess or whatever, the lady, and she had uh, like a, I don't know, something wrong with a tumor or something. She had it uh, taken out. And we're talking to her and I, I'm just like, man, you guys are like the sweetest people ever. And she was like, oh, look at the house. We just, we, we saw this like barn house out in like the middle of nowhere and we brought it here. <laughs> like they just picked it up on a trailer and brought it in. Oh. And they're trying to fix it and stuff. And they're showing us uh, the house. And I was just like, man, we're around time. Like, we got to go. Like, come on. And then she was like, oh, look at the, the they made a, a man-made lake. Dude, they got so much catfish in there oh, and stuff. all kinds of stuff. And they're, they're, they're really good people. And, I mean, we got back here. And that was a good find, huh? Yeah. Oh. And then the, the pierogi, like, we did, before, from there, we, we had brought the wood, got over here, and we made it within the two weeks for the pierogi fest. And we're, we're, I'm trying to think, like, how am I going to learn this smoker for a pierogi fest in two weeks? So I'm just like, I'm looking at all the videos on YouTube, like, just on, on this type of, type of uh, smoker. So I'm looking it up, I'm doing it. Dude, the first, the first night, I'm just like, I'm gonna get out there, I'm gonna do it. So I had a, I had a brisket, threw it up there. Do my seasonings, everything I do, get it going. Brought the wood that, that we got from over there, used it. Dude, I'm telling you, it, within seven to eight hours, because it was a small brisket, it was ready. Pulled it out, and I, I hold my small, I hold my, my meats, in the boxes, the warmers, mm -hmm. for about four hours because you're taking it out at 200 degrees. Yeah. So you want it at least 140. You yeah. want to serve it at 200. Yeah. So, and then you want it to bring the juices back. Yep. So I let it sit, whatever. Dude, I had like a bunch of friends over and they were like, well, let's try it, let's try it, let's try it. Dude, I sliced it, dude. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Boom, like, first Man, one. First one, this is perfect. We learned it within the first time. So we're ready. So Pro League Fest came. We did uh, Thursday night, but I didn't even leave. Thursday night, Thursday afternoon, we were able to set everything up. Put the smokers in the back, got that going. Uh, put the tents in the front, got the warmers up in the front. I mean, you see the warmers, put the, the prep table out, the chopping block. My other warmers for like the, the brisket tacos I was doing. Um, got everything set up, ready to rock and roll. And then Friday comes around. Friday morning. Well, Thursday night, I started smoking. I started getting all the briskets going. Um, Friday morning, the guy that lives behind the taco dive, he screams out <laughs> from the back of the, the balcony. He's like, hey. I was like, what? He's like, what are you cooking? And I was like, brisket. He's like, man, I was smelling that shit all yeah. fucking night. <laughs> so when he said it like that, he said shit up. I thought he was going to be like, man, it was like garbage to him or something. Yeah. He's like, man, he's like, I'm hungry as shit now. He's like, what is that? And I was like, brisket. He's like, is there anything ready? I was like, no, I got a few more hours and then I got to throw them in the warmers. He's like, all right. He's like, I'm going to try to come for lunch. And I was like, okay. And I was like, where do you work at? He's like, I work at BP. So I was like, all right, cool. Dude, he, he shows up Friday afternoon. And he's like, let me get a pound of that, that, that brisket you're smoking. I was like, all right, cool. He told me, he's like, I, gave him a, I was giving people, like, to try it. Yeah. And he tried, he's like, man, this is really good. He's like, I don't know if, I can, if one pound's gonna be good. Uh, you want more? And he's like, no, you know what? Let me just go with a pound and then we'll go from there. And I was like, all right, cool. And he was in his uniform, BP uniform. He got his food and he left. Dude, Saturday, we get, I don't know, you were there, were you there? No, I Sunday. Sunday, right? So Saturday, dude, like, I think around noon or one, like, dude, it was hot. And then all of a sudden, they're like, a storm's coming in, a rainstorm. But it, dude, it only lasted like 10 minutes. Yeah. Dude, people's tents went flying yeah. in. Like, it was yeah. bad, dude. But we are able to hold down the, the tent. And we are all out there. Hef uh, Heifer, Sean, mm -hmm. shout out to Sean from Heifer Barbecue. He helped me out. And uh, he's tall, dude. So he's holding in the middle, holding the whole thing down. And I'm trying to hold one. And uh, uh, Jerry from Poco Picoso was next to us. And he's yeah. trying to hold his down, too, and ours. And he's hanging from them. And uh, I think uh, we did. We did, uh, everybody came back out after. We picked everything up, helped people out, cleaned everything up quick, like really quick. Got everything going. Went, got the smokers back going again because it, it it went out. Yeah. Got the smokers going again. And I want to say about like six, dude. He comes huffing and puffing. This guy from BP has two big ass uh, black bags of mesh. 
like big like those uh, ikea bags mm -hmm. and i was like hey man what's going on and he was like how much purse do you got and i was like well i got a lot like what, what do you need like two or three pounds I said, no i need 10. no shit i was like wait what <clears throat> he was like yeah i need 10 pounds and he said man we're in a hurry though he's like you need we, we need this like now so i was like oh fuck so i called heifer we're both slicing the round. yeah yeah. Slicing quick as hell, trying to get it all done. Yeah. And he was like, man, he's like, you ain't even got to put it on a tray on. Just grab a big old aluminum. He's like, give me that aluminum. And he's like, just put everything in there. Like, just put it all in there. So I'm like, all right. And I'm, I'm weighing it out as we're going. He's all like, just wait from the beginning, man. He's like, just wait from the beginning. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, this is the first time, like, something like this happens. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah. trying to reach. He's like, don't worry about it. Just put everything. Just let me see that it's 10 and then just cut it up. So I was like, all right, cool. He's saying it. And he's like, hey man, some of that bread, he's like, that loaf of bread. And he's like, can, do you have like three or four of those? I was like, yeah, I got some. He's like, can I get like three or four of those? I was like, yeah, dude, that's all. all you he's like, he's like, you got those pints of barbecue sauce? I was like, nah, man, I only got the small ones. Yeah. And he's like, give me as many as you can. So, man, dude, everybody was on the line, the quickest time, trying to fill those up. Yeah, damn. And then he took it and he was like, he even gave us a tip of like 30 bucks, dude. And I was like, holy cow. Yeah. Once he left, I was like, I opened up the box, like, Oh shit, we're almost sold out for Saturday. Yeah. I was like, man, that, that was crazy. And then we just got so much feedback from that. Like so many people were like, this is yeah. really good, this is really good. There was only one guy, I think, that was like, uh, your pulled pork's okay. Yeah. He's like, I've had better. And I was like, that was the first one that I've ever felt. Yeah. Like, you, you felt you felt that yeah. like wow, like. But everybody was just like, Man, this pulled pork's so good. But that guy was just like, eh, like it's decent yeah but you you feel that as an owner like like wow like you didn't like it but then you start thinking like what did i do wrong was the seasoning off was the heat off was the smoke off was it being in the, the warmer off like what was wrong with it was there not enough juice because there's some people that like juicy full pork and there's some people that like dry full pork yeah. so you you don't know what his preference was right so you don't know right so I'm just like, man, I felt it. I was just like, man, this year my uh, Jess was just like, don't worry about it. It's, it's just one. Like, exactly. So many people are yeah. telling me this is so good. Dude, I had this lady with uh, her daughter. They kept coming back on Saturday, constantly. Like, can I get another slice of pork, or pork, pork, uh, pork belly? And I was like, yeah. Come back like towards, can I get another? Can I get another? That's and, what I'm I just, and I'm just like, <laughs> look, I'm looking and I'm just like, dude, this lady's feeding her daughter. Like her, her daughter, you, like, you know what it is. It's, uh, yep. There's a lot of fat in it too. Yep. So it's, it's kind of bad, but we know it's bad for us. Yeah. So I'm just like, she's feeding her daughter this. And I was like, you you feel it as an owner, like, that's a, should I say something like you shouldn't mm -hmm. be feeding your daughter that? Right. But you can't do that. You can't tell people what they can and cannot eat. Yeah. It's your choice to do whatever, as you yeah. please. So I'm just like, man, she just, just was like, I think we should, but I, I, I think she's not giving the whole thing to her. Yeah. Like, so I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Like, we'll just leave it like that. And then Sunday, dude, you you guys came, and we completely sold out. I want to say by four, because it was over by five. And the only thing that didn't completely sold out was I think it was a pulled pork. And I had like two, and I seen all like the police officers that were all out there, and they were from all over. There was not just white police. There was Hammond police, East yeah. Chicago well, police. That's a huge event. And um. I just called them all over. I called them all, all of them. I was like, hey, you guys want sandwiches? Like, and they're like, well, how much is that? Like, don't worry about it. It's, you guys are the first responders here. Like, I'm gonna take care of you guys. Awesome. And they, they, everyone was like, well, let me get all, as much as I can. I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. We're gonna split it between all of you. It's like, not everybody's gonna get it. Yeah. And then they're, they're, and someone called it on, on the radio and you heard it and all of a sudden, from those <laughs> like five or six over there, yeah. Boom! Like everybody showed up. I was like, "Holy cow!" Good promo for you, though. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, from that, um, there was two police officers from Sherville. They started following me. I had one from uh, I think a Hobart started following me, and then a couple from EC. They started following oh, me. Sure. So I was like, "Man, this is good." Totally. And then Jesse even told me, "Like, are you gonna have a discount once you get to your restaurant going mm -hmm. for first responders?" And I was like, "Well, you know what? I think I'm gonna have that and for veterans. Anything for." that has to do with that, I'm gonna take care of them because they took care of us. That's cool. And then she was like, yeah, she's like, that, that sounds pretty cool. She's like, well, what is it gonna be? I was like, I, I don't know, but right now, off the top of my head, but yeah. I mean, we're gonna have that. Yeah. And then after the pierogi fest, what do we do at that? We've been just doing small little events, small little caterings here and there. Um, Shit Bob, 
is ship out something like an Amazon type uh -huh. company yeah, yeah. out of Cicero. We've done two of their their nice. facilities. Oh yeah. So I mean, like from from where we're at, Pierogi, we had gotten way more. Yeah. For, for I see you do some of the brew tour stuff. Oh yeah. Um, you did some Chicago stuff at uh, um, Crowbar. Crowbar. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so you've been doing it, um, but now with your new venture, oh, yeah. all that led into, you know, what you're about to do, oh, yeah. in my opinion. Um, and so why, okay, do you want to get right into the new store? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Why did you pick Whiting? Is it because of the success of Progi Fest? You've lived there before, as you had mentioned. I, yeah, I think the, the love that I got from Whiting, and not only that, the city is so willing to work with you. Yeah. Um, it is a dope ass town too, yeah. like that downtown like strip it, where they hold it at. Yeah. It's nice because 119, you're you're right off the lake, like literally right off the lake from our facility, well from our location. I want to say it's four blocks down, and you're at Lake Michigan. So if people smell as they're going, they're gonna be like, oh, what's Don't that look. smell? Like, let's go get some barbecue. But not only that, like it's the downtown vibe. I have friends that live in Whiting and. They love the way the com the small little community of them because it's off at uh, Ed I think it's called Edgerton Street. Mm -hmm. West is called Roberts Hill, which is Hammond. Hammond owns that, but they still have Whiting zip code. And it technically, if the people pass through, they're gonna think it's Whiting, but it's not. It's Hammond owns all that. So like that small little community of Whiting that that's there, dude. It's it's so good. And then I met. Um, Keith Burke, which is, he no, he's no longer with White, the city of White, but he was with city of White at the time. And dude, he, he was so like, like uh, helpful. Awesome. He was like, dude, he's like, you White will be good for you. We have grants, we have this. He's like, we're willing to work with whatever you were trying to do to come into the city. Um, awesome. The building inspectors, like everybody's willing to work with you to bring in business into White. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. We like that small business, uh, you know, they're pro small business. They yeah. want new businesses to come and they're supportive of it. Yeah. And obviously I hear, you know, not good things about sometimes dealing with the cities yeah. um, in different places. And there's several that I've heard that I'm eager to look into um, that are just like that. So yeah, I've, I've heard uh, like Crown Point is mm -hmm. one of the worst ones you want to go. I mean, I don't want to talk bad about Crown Point or nothing, but from what I heard, you're the, the inspectors to yeah. get in building inspectors are much office. harder to work it's with. much harder to work with yeah. and, they, and they take longer yeah for any little thing electricity yeah. whatever codes and yeah. it's just the same thing yeah. i was telling you about our tony park location yeah, yeah. so it, it got you you got to work with a city that's willing to work with you yep and if they're they're willing to work with you that's where you want to especially be. on your first go around when you're yeah. learning it the hard way again yeah. you know and, and from them that from that dude it's it's that would be a good experience like they 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 open me and I just went talk to the city. Monday, Tuesday Tuesday I went to go talk to the city. Dude, the mayor was like so, like I met the whole city council, like everybody that's on the board. Yeah. And dude, everybody was like, because I wanted to talk about the business and stuff, and they're like, yeah, you know that that's fine. And there was this older guy. He said, well, what kind of barbecue are you gonna have? You gonna have drive through? Or are you gonna? Have? I was like, no, no, no drive through. And then he was like, uh, well, what kind of what kind of barbecue is it? So once I said it was a such a, like, it's like I said again, it's not Texas style, it's the Texas style brisket, but there's different stuff, so it's a crack. So he was all like, ooh, crack style. He's like, so Texas brisket. I'm like, yes, the, the brisket, we can say it's Central Texas style, it is. And then he was like, ooh, that sounds so good. I can't wait to have it. He's like, so everybody that's here, we get free, right? Free food. <laughs> and like, no, playing, no. Like, play, like playing around. And yeah. I was like, oh, man, I got you guys. Don't worry about it. And he started crying. He's like, man, I'm just playing. I'm playing. Yeah. And I was like, man, I was like, whenever you guys want to go in, I was like, you never know. I, well, I, I hope I, they I, do a ribbon cutting for you. Yeah. And, you know, most cities, especially how you're talking about them now, the aldermen will come out. You know, yeah. they'll do a nice, uh, you know, ceremony for you or whatever. Get the newspapers involved and everything. Yeah. Uh, I would set that up with them for sure, you know, because yeah. our city in Payless did that for us uh, for some of our anniversary stuff, and that's a huge thing for people opening yeah. to get into local newspapers. And they will do that because they're looking for content as well. Oh. They're looking to show people they're supportive of the businesses. Oh, yeah. You know, so when you do like your soft opening, you get your stuff all situated, like the next week or two, then do that. Yeah. And then get that free promo out of it and get everybody in the taste it. So once you get the city on board, 
That's ready to go. Yeah, you're locked in. So the 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 mayor even told me like he was like, dude, he got up like two or three times. He like it was nice meeting you, and he was polite and he like like awesome. stood and I'm just like a ha firm handshake and stuff. And I was just like, man, this dude's like nice. He's he's really he's really willing to work with the people, and that that's a good thing. When when you know that the mayor is willing to talk to you yeah. and sit down with you and conversate with you, you know that that city is willing to work with you. Yeah. Cause I've heard stories where the mayor doesn't even want to talk to yeah. that person. Go talk to that alderman or go yeah. talk to that, that person yeah. over there. And you, you're, you're trying to bring business into your city and, and you're not willing to work yeah. with the people. Like why don't you- And you should be a customer of your own city and all that yeah. too, right? You keep yeah. it flowing, so. And then he was like, uh, if, he was like, if you need a liquor license, let me know too. I was like, well, I don't know how it works over here, but yeah. I was like, I, I'm willing to do that down the road, yeah. you know, for lunch, you know, have some regular beer and sell it there or whatever. So let's, I'll look into it. He's like, all right, he can give me his business card. And he's like, call him to this person, you know, they could talk to you and, and go from there. So I was like, all right, thank you. And then he got up again and he was, it was nice meeting you. And, uh, we can't wait for your business and awesome. we're willing to help you out with everything you need. Anything you need, you just call us and we, we got you. And I was Sorry. like, oh wow, like, that was so cool. Yeah, good shit. Yeah. Nice. So it's going to be Whiting. Uh, when do you plan to open? Um, well, right now you know, we're... barring any roadblocks, of course. Yeah. Hopefully if everything goes as planned, we want to um, do March 2nd. Because we're going to be doing, um, yeah, March 2nd will be a Wednesday. So we're hoping everything goes as planned. And we can open that day, hopefully. Cool. Hopefully. Sounds good. What's your menu gonna be like? So the menu's gonna be we're gonna do our regular uh, Texas brisket, well brisket, uh, pulled pork, pork belly, uh, turkey breast, sausages, um, ribs is the basic. That's gonna be like an everyday thing. Gotcha. And then we are gonna do uh, our sides, potato salad, coleslaw, uh, cold pasta, elote, and uh, pencil beans that are, are my style, the way I do it. And then we're also gonna do uh, one meat, two meat with a side. Like a platter. And like a platter. Oh yeah. And then we're also gonna do um, the brisket elote. So like the elote in the cup, yeah. we're brisket on top. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna do like a whole platter too. Like so if you want a quarter pound, like we're, we're, we're trying to work the details on it, but we're trying to think of uh, a half a pound of brisket, a half a pound of ribs, a half a pound of sausage, a half a pound turkey breast and like sell it so you could try the whole thing definitely everything so we're trying to look into that we're trying to do that but we're trying to see price point and all that how much you because you really don't like because brisket's expensive so maybe just a half a pound of that with a, a quarter pound of pulled pork mm -hmm. like because you don't need as much of yeah. the other so we're trying to figure out what's a good um weight for each one gotcha. to put on a platter so we're, we're on that right now and then we want to do um, our, our uh, specials. So Tuesday would be the day that I'm gonna prep everything. So I'm gonna be cutting all the meat. What's what's left over is, is a lot of fat and yep. a lot of meat. Yep. So why not turn that into hamburgers? And have Wednesday as hamburgers, smoked burgers. Gotcha. So we'll smoke the burger and then we'll finish it off on the grill. Nice. We'll smoke it and as, as they're coming out the smoker, throw it on the grill as they need them, boom, 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 boom. So it'll be a smoked brisket uh, burger Smart. Uh, like on, on Wednesdays, yeah. and then Thursdays will be like half chickens, um, and then uh, Friday we'll probably do something like uh, rib tips. Saturday, uh, we're, we're still working the details, like just having a special for every day. Um, pork chops, like uh, we we like I, well, I like cutting like an inch and a half, give or take or an inch of pork chops, season it perfect over over the grill, and just serve it like that. We're thinking, we're just thinking out of the box. Yep. What else can we do as a restaurant to bring in more people? And then we're also willing to work. My best friend uh, passed from CF, uh, Cystic Fibrosis, yeah. Cystic yeah. Yeah. that's Jess's brother. Mm -hmm. So Jess's brother was my best friend when he passed. Um, he loved like working with kids. He loved like kids a lot. Like all of, all of us had kids, like uh, the whole group that we had. Um, all had kids and he would always be at the birthday parties. He's always buying them gifts. He's always willing He was always wanting to buy the bigger gift over everybody like he, he brought the best gift yeah. Yeah. So we knew he loved the kids and he would always play with the kids like always So I, I was talking to Jess and I was like man, the school is literally across the street from me 
they have to pass my building to get home. So they, the school, they have to go through it. Yeah. So I was like, how about we do something in memory of him? Like all kids um, right after school, like a Frito pie. Yeah. Or like the East Side is known for the Heinz hot sauce. I don't know if you ever see that mustard base. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it. Hot sauce. So with, with Cheetos or something, like at my cost. Yeah. Not not charge them. Yeah. And everyone's like, well, you're going to lose money. I was like, but this is for the kids though. Yeah. Like, I, I understand that, but the kids, like, it, it's something for them. Like, something, because I remember as a kid growing up, my best friend, one of, one of my best friends, um, his friend, his mom worked at Beggars, the original one on 127th and Western. So when we used to live middle school, we used to go do the sizes back then were like a buck. Yeah. Dude, sometimes she wouldn't even charge us. Sometimes she would charge us when yeah. a man just over there or whatever. But we'll go and get a slice from Beggars every day. Yeah. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. I want to keep that going. My so, father did the same sort of thing back in the day. Um, it's just little things that make a difference yeah. because those kids remember, they'll talk to their parents. Yep. But they will also grow up to be your customer as well. Yep. And it's important not only to tie in your best friend to do something for the kids. Like it's a win-win. Like the technical term is be like a lost leader for yeah. your business, but you need those things. Yeah. Um, and it makes a big difference. All right. That's cool. And we're, 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 we're We'll do that, and then I'm trying to think of what else we were gonna do. Oh, wow. the the hardest part right now is trying to get a hold of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, well, that's the hardest part. Yeah, right good now. luck. Yeah. yeah, I mean the big corporations. We got a few contacts I'll help you with too. Uh, but um, okay, are you gonna continue to do like uh, catering just out of the store? Then are you gonna deliver? What what is your plan for that? So my my plan is I'm gonna work with Toast, and we're gonna do. Uh, like the cafeteria stuff, mm -hmm. and then they're, they're so big inside on the back side. I want to build another um, counter and do online and catering pickup there. Gotcha. So, people that want to that cater, you guys would, I mean, we'll still do the catering part, but there's some people that just want like a full pork for, for dinner or whatever. Yep. It's still considered catering. Yeah. So, you can come pick it up, we'll have it. In, in the box ready, ready for you gotcha. and then we'll do the online back there too so and then it has a side door so people will come in that side door and go straight right there pick up they need and go straight out nice and then we'll mess with it with our cafeteria style line perfect I, i'm like i like that it's separated like that that's gonna be a big one yeah so it's like man it is like so many possibilities and then um yeah and hopefully that will work so we'll still do the online and i mean we'll do the online and we'll do the catering too um, we're still shout out to Steve T from photography. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he's my photographer for everything. We'll get him on one of these too, because yeah. I've been following him for a minute. Um, him and I are going to work on something soon. We just haven't locked in these Sundays, which yeah. are always best for all of us. Yeah. Right. So, uh, like, I have my army stuff next week. We're doing this one this week. So, like, that already pushes it three weeks now. Yeah. You know. But uh, shout out to him. Yeah. Shout out to Steve T. Follow him, guys. He's a good guy. He does a lot of good photos. Um, we're still gonna do like the brewery thing. So I'm thinking of hopefully once we get our foot in the door with the restaurant, do once a month, like on a Saturday, or even when the summer comes to two a month cool. on a Saturday. And we'll just go to any brewery that, that wants us and we'll go. All right, so any breweries, listen, if uh, this is shared on your page or you come across it, hey, just reach out uh, to either one of us and we'll put it together, make it happen um, for, for our own business, but also each other, right? If you're looking yeah. for him, um, we don't know really how to get to him. Maybe you can't click a link, I don't know. But I'll, I'll hook it up as well. So, yeah. so also a shout out to Memo um, from Memo's uh, flights. Memo's at Memo at flights uh, bar. He wants to do a, a collab at a bar too. So I mean, like, there's there's other people that are willing to work with you, and that's a good thing. Like, you, you have people that are willing to yep. to jump in on something with you. So we're we're planning on something like that too at a at a brewery, and then uh, Windmill. Shout out to Windmill. Windmill will let me go over there and uh, sell at their location and dude that was a, dude, that was a day that we had that ice foam and i was there <laughs> yeah. and it, like look it's like we sold out yeah during an ice storm oh, like it was so crazy oh, like, that's good news uh, for regular ass good days you know so i'm just like man and he was like dude you guys are welcome whenever you guys want to come back and i was like oh man thank you so much awesome and then talking talking with that dude he ends up living in the same subdivision as me we, i didn't even know that wow so I'm just like, holy small world. Yeah. And that's why you talk to people and get engaged with people because then you make all these connections that yeah. lead into more good shit. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So the vision for the business now, 
um, what you're what you're establishing now, you know, doing the craft barbecue your way, being different. Is that what your vision is for what you're about to do uh, for the new store? Yeah, that that style. Where I'm also looking into trying to make it open a door through the back of the kitchen to put the other smoker in the back, so you can be closer in and out, yeah. in, and out in and out. So like the the vision. Hopefully everything just stays as is, as it is, and then we just keep moving forward. And then hopefully within a year or two, start putting money away and maybe buy land on 119th and build our own place, hopefully. Okay. And, and they are, the city already talked and they, they said that they're willing to do whatever to help us with stuff like that too. Awesome. That, that's kind of the same thing, same thing we're doing uh, because we've always wanted to like own our own building, right? Yeah. That's always the goal, right? Uh, there's tons of storefronts. Renting is all good. You still make a good living, make good money. Um, but owning, especially us, we've been in this for 45 years, how much we fucking paid in rent, right? And we have decent landlords, you know, definitely been a, a good partnership with them, but owning is where it's at. Yeah. So I'm with you on that future goal for sure um, with our franchising and owning our own uh, where we're at in our, in our location, you know, where our home base is, kind of like you said with Whiting right there. Um, definitely. So I'm with you on that. And I'm, yeah. I'm eager to see all the shit happen, man. Um, from your story coming up <clears throat> and how it happened <clears throat> for everyone listening he's went all in like four or five different times right. from losing the job to going to Texas uh, from that smoker putting his money in from all that to now opening this store if you guys don't understand what, what it's going to take to get yourself in a position to be your own boss right to be a small business owner um, to opening a location to testing out those recipes there's a whole lot of shit that yeah. goes into this and it takes time but it is worth it right because now he gets to live out that dream that started 16 years ago or whatever with his uh michael yeah in texas um learning this and so what a great story a full culmination and having a uh, supportive girlfriend yeah. and, and supportive family helps too um and i know your son has helped a little bit in the business too yeah. which is awesome and he's doing his own good shit right now but that's what's awesome about it because i was young uh well my dad was started before me but to have that next generation possibly come up under you um, is really cool because he's going to see you put in that work and that's going to influence him, yeah. uh, which is going to be awesome to see. So I'm, I'm super excited uh, for everything that's that's coming. So, um, man, we had a lot of shit today. Um, yeah. So um, I want to recap just about where everybody can find you. Um, so we already talked the website's not up yet, but uh, we'll talk about that. But follow on social media. Uh, all the links again will be in the description. <clears throat> I'm going to share it on all my pages, Pepo's pages, my Robert Pepo pages. I'm um, going to be available on YouTube uh, in a couple days. You know, it's going to take a while to get to the hour and 48 minutes of content right now with the video and the audio. But uh, plug yourself again um, where everybody can find you at. All right. On Instagram, you can find me at Buzz and Barbecue, B U Z Z I N B B Q on Instagram. And then Facebook, B U Z Z I N. Barbecue LLC on Facebook. All we're also on TikTok for uh, Buzz and Barbecue, B U Z Z I N B B Q. Yes, sir. And of course, uh, this podcast was sponsored by Buzz and Barbecue and Pepos, peposubs.com, uh, peposubs.com. I own all those domains. You can go find us. Uh, Pepos Great Sub Sandwiches on Facebook. We also have Pepos Subs on TikTok and me, Robert underscore J underscore Pepo um, on Instagram. I will share all those links. You can find this on my shit and you'll be able to find it on his as well. Um, so again, Buzz, thank you so much. Um, that was an awesome conversation. A lot more stuff that I got to learn. Check out his new location. You will not be disappointed. But again, it's Robert Pepo with Pepo Subs and Buzz and Barbecue, baby.